What's going on investors, AK from Fowler here. And today we're gonna to talk about the importance of big picture thinking in investing. And hopefully with this video, it will help you get out of the minutia and help you think big, which is really gonna help your returns. Now the example we're gonna use for this video is Joel Greenblatt. Now Joel is a very famous value investor who wrote a book called The Little Book That Beats the Market. And that book made the magic formula that he created for value investing very popular as well. He also created the Value Investing Club website and he's a professor at Columbia his business school. So in his classes at Columbia, he often talked about how he was only average at valuation work. He wasn't that amazing at valuing companies. He had just a little bit of edge there. What he was actually really good at and where he had a lot of edge was putting a bunch of information into context. He was good at viewing the bigger picture and pinpointing what actually mattered. Here's a quote from him. Explain the big picture. Your predecessors, MBAs, failed over a long period of time. It has nothing to do about their ability to do a spreadsheet. It has more to do with the big picture. I focus on the big picture. Think of the logic, not just the formula. It is so important to focus on what's important. Too many investors just get lost in small, minute details that don't actually matter. The last thing you want to do in investing is focus on the trees so hard that you miss the forest. And there's a lot of different ways this happens in the markets. So take value investing, for example. In value investing, a lot of the edge and the calculations to value something has been eaten away. A computer does it pretty easily. And we actually talked about this in a previous video about the old style of value investing not working anymore. If you haven't seen that, I'll link to it above. So a problem I see with a lot of new investors is that they get obsessed with small, small details in their analysis. So for example, they come out of school learning how to use Excel and they keep plugging in numbers into their spreadsheets and they're so excited when it spits something out. Are the spreadsheet calculations actually spitting out anything important that could be used to make money in the market? Well, usually it's not, at least for the beginners. And if you want to see an example of this, just jump on Seeking Alpha and look at the comments underneath the articles. These guys debate every small detail that doesn't even affect the overall investment thesis. The most successful guys are thinking beyond just these numbers. They're not stuck in that myopic point of view. Like Joel Greenblatt said, they're looking at the bigger picture and trying to fit the pieces together. Another place where this happens is with trend traders. So maybe they stumble upon a really great trend. And if you see a really great trend, you should be able to make a lot of money out of it, right? But no, what these guys end up doing is try to snipe their entries and exit and trade around the trend. And in doing so, they just end up over trading and missing a majority of the money. And their mentality there is is that, okay, if I can just trade this perfectly, get in at exactly the right time and get out at the right time, I can make a lot more money. Why do I have to sit through all these dips? But again, they're focusing on the wrong thing. You shouldn't be trying a short-term trade every dip and rally. The big picture is the big trend. You need to put yourself in it and be patient and sit on your hands. So another thing that Joel said that's interesting is that you need to focus on the logic and not just the formula. Now this really applies when it comes to quants. One of the biggest problems with backtesting is when you overdo it and find some random core correlation that ends up making money. But the problem is, if you just back tested data like that and found something, it doesn't always mean that thing is robust. Oftentimes it blows up and leaves you with nothing. And that's the whole issue with data mining. So the best quants when they're coming up with new strategies is they're starting with something that makes logical sense. They're breaking it down to the first principles and then seeing if the data supports what they thought. They're not just mining data trying to find some random correlation. They think deeper and try to look at the bigger picture of why something would work. Now in some ways, markets are always changing, right? I mean, there's new assets, new strategies, and new technologies all the time. I mean, technology is always changing, so there's always gonna be new markets and new strategies. So if you wanna focus on the big picture of markets in general, then you need to drill down to the principles of markets that don't change. So for example, one of the reasons why we talk about psychology so much on this channel is because that's one constant, even as the markets continue to change. Markets are created by humans interacting and human psychology doesn't change. So you're better off focusing on the big picture, which is the human psychology and learning how to understand that. So what are you focused on in your trading? Are you looking at the big picture or are you stuck in the details? Let me know in the comments what you think is the most important part to focus on in your process. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that bell for notifications of new videos. We publish about three a week, all market and business related. So subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Stay fallible out there. Bye.